Happy holidays from Foxborough, Massachusetts. Temperatures right around the 50 degree mark. The rain that was blanketing this region this morning has subsided and we are ready. New England winning the toss, they defer. And so Buffalo with the football from their own 20 to get this thing started today. Here comes Kyle Orton, 6-5 as Buffalo's starting quarterback. And Sally, he has struggled over their last three-game road stretch. And a big surprise, for, at least for some, that Marone elected to stick with the vet this week and not go back to Manuel. Doug Marone made the decision, believes that Kyle Orton stands the best chance of helping him win today, something he has yet to do in his second year as the head coach. Fred Jackson, a lone setback. He is the oldest running back in the NFL. Have to give him that pop as this guy continues to produce at uh, pretty surreal levels considering his age and the wear and tear. Chantrell Henderson today becomes the first seventh round draft choice to start all 16 games in the season since 2004, but it has been a malign Buffalo offensive line. We'll talk about that as the day goes on. Scott Chandler, that has been the buzzword for Bill Belichick all this week here. Burned the Patriots back in week six for six catches and 105 yards. Second and seven, right on cue. It is Orton to a tight end, Lee Smith, who will back up Chandler this afternoon. He picks up 18 yards and a Buffalo first down. Vince Wilford, a lot of questions on how he would come back from that Achilles injury that sidelined him for most of last season. He's had a fine year. Akeem Ayers, what a pickup he has been. Invaluable, certainly in the absence of Chandler Jones, who's back from his injury. Devin McCourty, one time in 2010, back in one of their safety positions. This is Fred Jackson. Picks up a good five yard burst and a nice run. So here is Orton Sally taking over for EJ Manuel back in week five. Gave him that initial shot in the arm, really changed the trajectory of the team. Two game-winning drives, his first three starts, but that's kind of tapered off. Yeah, and this coach, and even Orton said that they've had to make a do this year because, remember, he was not in the off-season training program. In fact, he didn't even go through training camp or preseason with the Buffalo Bills. He was a very late addition. Second and five from just outside the 46. Orton fears the pocket collapse, swings it over the middle. This is Watkins inside the 30. Watkins still going to the 10. Stiff serves McCourty. Finally brought down at the 10-yard line, 43 yards on the catch and run by Sammy Watkins. In the first game earlier in the year, Terrell Reeves had his way with the rookie Sammy Watkins. As you can see there, Watkins able to catch the ball in close proximity, even though Reeves was in good position. He missed the ball, Watkins able to get the catch and run, and doesn't go down until Devin McCourty tackles him at the 10-yard line. Watkins entered the day needing 75 yards to become a 10th NFL rookie since 92 to gain over 1,000 yards in a season. He's more than halfway there after his first catch. First and goal, Jackson puts his shoulder down, gets close to the five. As that clock continues to run, so a good-looking opening drive orchestrated here by Orton. Bill Belichick can't be happy. He wanted to see his defense come out and operate at high level of execution is what he talked about. It's not about momentum going into the playoffs. He said it's about preparation and execution. Second and goal from the six. Orton from the gun. Patriots coming with the blitz. Bills pick it up. Orton to the end zone. Caught Robert Woods for the Buffalo touchdown. And how about that start? for a Bills team with really nothing to play for in terms of the postseason, but they march right down the field and take the early lead. This isn't what Bill Belichick was looking at. There's Woods. Look, he just splits the defense. He is wide open. Busted coverage on the back end by the Patriots. Devin McCourty looking over to the other side, wondering who had Woods coming over the middle of the field. Orton, three for three on the drive, 67 yards. The big throw to Watkins. And for Robert Woods, his fifth receiving touchdown of the season in what has been a career year for him. Dan Carpenter on to kick, the seventh-year kicker out of Montana. Good snap, hold, and Carpenter is perfect. So the Buffalo Bills, who have not won ever in this stadium, trying to snap a 13-game road losing streak against the Pates. Pets out and early. Buffalo trying to put that heartily disappointing loss in Oakland behind him quickly. 
And that's exactly the way to do it. As Orton, three for three on the drive. A long 43-yard catch and run on the pass to Watkins. Setting the table for Woods. And the Bills out to the early 7 to nothing lead. Deep kick. Danny Amendola making a start for his second straight week in for Julian Edelman. Takes a knee, and Tom Brady comes onto the field. Uh, Brady, Sally, telling us again that uh, just with the exception of the second half of the Miami win a couple of weeks ago, just hasn't felt like they've been very sharp. One of the reasons he wanted to play today. Yeah, he felt it was important for him to play, and, you know, Bill Belichick believes it's important for him to play, for the offense to get clicking, to gain some continuity in chemistry, try to get it going early in the game before pulling Tom Brady out. First and ten, Brady from the gun, and keep it on the ground. This is Brandon Bolton, the third-year running back out of Mississippi. Offensive line giving up four sacks, very uncharacteristic for this group. Couple of regulars are out. Josh Klein in for Dan Connolly for the second straight week, and Marcus Cannon makes a start for Sebastian Vollmer, who is out today with a back injury. We mentioned Gronkowski's absence, so the tight end Michael Hoamana of Manawa Nui, excuse me, making the start. Fifth-year tight end out of Illinois, second and three as Bolden, the early runner at the start. Defensively, what a season it's been for Buffalo. We mentioned Mo Marcel Darius out with the knee injury, so Jarius Wynn steps into that vacated role. Brandon Spikes facing his old team today, and Preston Brown, their stud leading tackler, first year player out of Louisville. Ron Brooks making his third career start in the first since 2012. Stephon Gilmore up today dealing with a concussion, a pass intended for Bolden out of the backfield. So Buffalo's defense getting off the field, a quick three and out for New England. And uh, not the start that uh, Bill Belichick was looking for. Lacked continuity, lacked chemistry, could not convert on third down. Looked like that ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage. Remember, two of Brady's starting offensive linemen, Sebastian Vollmer, Dan Connolly, out of today's game. Ryan Allen on to punt. And this is Marcus Thickpen fielding from his own 20. Thickpen finds the edge at the sideline. There's a couple of late penalty markers coming in behind the play. Could be an illegal block on the Bills. A 51-yard punt, 18 on the return. During the return, illegal block in the back. Receiving team number 48. 10-yard penalty, first down, timeout. So Kyle Orton back onto the field, 7 to nothing Buffalo. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Gillette Stadium, Foxborough, Mass, 7 to nothing Bills. As we welcome you back to the NFL on CBS. Spiro Dita, Solomon Wilcox, rest of our CBS crew, CJ Spiller. Here's the long setback on first and 10. They keep it on the ground, Spiller. Making his return last week from that eight-week absence after the collarbone injury. What a first drive it was, Sally, orchestrated by Orton. Yeah, Marone, he approves of Orton, and Orton pays it off. Pays off the confidence. Three passes, three completions. The final one for a touchdown to Robert Woods of 10 yards, getting his team off to a good start. There's E.J. Manuel. What did Doug Marone tell us yesterday? The NFL isn't a, a league for tryouts. At least for the moment, sticking with Orton over the middle. He finds the tight end, Chandler, who had that big day week six against the Patriots. 19 yards through the air. And boy, is Orton sharp at the start. Four for four. There he is coming off the left side of your screen. Bill Belichick said that Scott Chandler seems to always play well against us. He's been a Patriot killer of sorts, making big plays every time he's facing Bill Belichick's group. Devin McCourty said that that's the only name we heard this week. And it's this Patriots defense on its heels at the start. First and ten. Orton again through the air, throws it behind Spiller. Had to reach back and low for it. Looks like maybe a miscommunication between those two. Incompletion will set up a second and ten. You know, C.J. Spiller was out. Significant period of time. Came back last week in the game against the Raiders. And on that route, might want to just slow it down. Throttle it down because he was running so fast he nearly ran into the defender causing that ball to be underthrown just a little bit Six. 
Second and ten. Orton hit on the release. Gets it to Woods nonetheless. Right at midfield. Woods, who had the touchdown catch earlier. Seven yards through the air. And they are about four yards short of the marker. So Woods has the hot route coming underneath on the slant because the Patriots were blitzing. Tavon Wilson coming off the corner. He was going to hit Orton had he not released the ball quickly. Third and two. Better than 68,000 here at Gillette Stadium. Where does Orton go here as they line up just inside Patriots territory? Orton looking. He loses the set from Minkovich, throws it over the middle. Intended for Jackson, it's incomplete. Patriots able to get off the field on third down simply because here's Nikovic. Watch him coming off the right side. Number 50 flushes Orton out of the pocket. From there, you know, Orton doesn't throw the ball as accurately when he's on the move. Have to be able to push him to his right or to his left, but you cannot allow him to step up in the pocket. This Patriots defense currently eighth in the NFL in scoring defense. Likely to be the ninth. Patriots defensive unit in the Brady era to hold an opponent under 20 points per game and considering some of the injuries they've had to deal with it has been an awfully impressive season but they're down seven to the Buffalo Bills overcast day here in Foxborough Mass seven to nothing Bills a suddenly struggling Patriots offense Trying to figure some things out. They're three and out in their first drive. Brady throwing over the seam. Finds his tight end on first and ten. That's Brian Timms. On the outside, Timms, the receiver, I beg your pardon. Second year out of Florida A&M. 18 yards and a Patriots first down. They get one-on-one -on -one covers to the outside. Excellent comeback route. And this is what Belichick talked about. One of the things they wanted to work on today, Spiro, was the ability to push the ball down the field, get completions and then pick up yards by the chunks in the passing game. First and 10. Play action for Brady. He's going to take the shot. There's it out far side of the field. Incomplete. Ron Brooks on the coverage. Brandon LaFell was the intended receiver. Sally looked like some inadvertent contact. No penalty. Yeah, this is Tim's at the bottom of the screen. See right there by Brooks. See, there's beyond five yards and then some holding even right there as he goes out of bounds, but the flag doesn't come out. Maybe they ruled that ball incatchable. But there was contact. LaFell was coming up the seat. He had looked like was the intended receiver. Shane Vereen now, one of the top receiving running backs in the NFL, split out top of your picture. And that's where Brady goes on second and ten. Vereen brought down just short of the 46 yards through the air. Tackled by Ron Brooks. So Tom Brady, the two-time league MVP who has owned Buffalo in his career, 23-2 and against the Bills. Super Bowl titles in three of his first four years. Solid gearing up for what he hopes is another postseason run. And those 12 division championships in his 15 seasons here at the Patriots, the most ever by any quarterback in NFL history. Third and four, LaFell in motion. Brady over the middle, finds LaFell. Inside Bills territory, still going, finally tripped up at the 35 by the safety, Aaron Williams. 27 yards and a Patriots first down. Oh, it's a really nice route. Look, he'll clear and cross underneath the traffic. You can see the defender can't clear through the trash. Nice throw to Brandon LaFell, who, you know, Tom Brady, when we talked to him, he said that he and LaFell have hit it off right away. You're looking for continuity and chemistry. These two have it. LaFell had the two touchdowns in that week six game against the Bills, including a 56-yarder in the fourth quarter. Today, their frontline receiver will have an again. First and ten pass is incomplete. Pressure coming from Jarius Wynn making the start today for the injured Marcel Darius. Ball is going to be thrown down the field to Maneri. He drops it. Tight end puts it on the ground. And when you're looking for continuity and chemistry, you know, players who aren't used to being in the huddle with Tom Brady, they're going to have to start making plays. Belichick talked about it. Any of these guys can end up playing in the postseason. 
35-yard line. We go to New York, get our first update with J.B. Houston is hopeful. Early in the uh, first quarter, guys, they go five plays, 83 yards. That's Case Keenum. That's Houston's fourth quarterback of the year. 10-yard TD pass to Arian Foster. Texas take a 7-0 lead over the Jaguars. All right, boom, we're back to Spiro and Solomon. So many questions still left unanswered. Houston obviously needing to take care of business if their postseason hopes are going to become realized. Third and eight from inside the 34. Brady slings it far side. It's caught. That's Timms. Very close to that first down marker. Officials say he's got it as they move the sticks. One thing to pay attention to here, Spiro, on this possession. Great protection by the offensive line for Tom Brady. It allows the receivers to get down the field, stretch it a bit, and be able to make these kind of completions. Take a look at the five guys. Marcus Cannon at that right tackle position, protecting Tom Brady against one of the best pass rushing defenses in the National Football League. Garrett Blunt onto the field, did not play last week against the Jets. Dealing with the shoulder injury, first carry for him today. And he was another guy, Sally, that Bill Belichick and Tom Brady said that they needed to get going. He has quieted down their last couple of games. It's one of the areas Bill Belichick wanted to see improve in today's game. Higher levels of execution and efficiency inside the, with the running game, and he wants to get it done with LeGarrette Blount. Second and eight. This is Blount taking guys on. Such a load to deal with. Six feet, 250. Bulldozing his way for a five-yard pickup, and then a late penalty marker comes in. Tackled by Bradham and Corey Graham. And now we wait the call from our referee today, Terry McCauley. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Defense number 37. Now finishes the goal. Automatic first down. That's Nikel Roby, one of their backup cornerbacks. Upset with himself. As they will mark them down inside the tent. Right here. With Danny Amendola. Ripping that helmet off, and that'll get you a penalty flag every time. So Patriots offense ranked first in the NFL in scoring to over 30 points per game. Trying to fight through their struggles from the last couple of weeks. First and goal from the nine. This is Blunt. Lost his footing. Struggles to get back to the line of scrimmage. May have lost a yard. As that clock continues to run, we approach four minutes left in this first quarter. Well, he's got good instincts. He saw the penetration by 94, Mario Williams. He tried to cut back, but he slipped. Remember, there was a tarp on the field this morning. We had heavy rains through the night, early portion of the morning. I have to wonder if he hit a wet spot there. Took the tarp off the field right at 10.30 this morning, local time. Shane Vereen again split out this time. Bottom of your picture on second and goal. Brady throws far side. It's great. Timms again. Forced out of bounds. So Brian Timms, who has not had his number called much this season. Here's Timms in the slot. That's what Belichick talked about. He said, we want to get other guys on the field as well. It's not about resting players or saving guys. We want to get some of these other guys an opportunity. He said, you never know who we're going to need when we get into the postseason. Brady as efficient a red zone passer as there's been in the NFL this season. Third down, goal to go from just outside the six. Brady has time now, flushed out. Off his back foot, incomplete. Good coverage in the end zone by that Buffalo secondary. So Brady off the field, they'll have to settle for three. Let's take a look at it and see what coverage you had because Tom Brady didn't find anyone open as the receivers released down the field. Bracket coverage at the bottom of the screen. Same at the top. And all five intended weapons. Look, everyone covered, including the running back, Shane Vereen. So here is Goskowski. 24-yard chip shot attempt. What a season it's been for him. Selected to his third Pro Bowl this week. 
and an easy 24-yarder to get the Patriots on the board. 7-3 Buffalo, late stages of the first. Eighty yard drive, thirteen plays, capped off by the twenty four yard field goal by Steven Gaskowski. So seven three Buffalo as we welcome you back to Gillette Stadium. Just over three minutes left in this opening quarter. Patriots headed into the AFC postseason as the one seed. Trying to end their regular season. Perfect eight no at home, but they're down four. Solomon Wilcox, rest of our CBS crew. This is Spiro Dinas. Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, 7 3 Buffalo. First and 10. This is Booby Dixon. Bounces to the outside. That wide load crosses the 25. So a lot of Buffalo fans, Sally, conflicted with the, the season. It's been their long postseason drought, longest in the league in 15 years. But, but so much good happened this year. Most wins in a season in 10 years. Yeah, Doug Marone really has gotten the attention of his players. Uh, it's been able to get them to eight and seven. A win today would give them their first winning season in over a decade. That's what he wants to accomplish. He said it's not about trying to develop a player. Priority number one is to go out and get wins. Had that very impressive home win against Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay a couple of weeks ago. And then that very disappointing performance in Oakland last Sunday that mathematically eliminated them from postseason contention. A lot of talk about Doug Marone's future with this organization appears to be safe. And another guy, Sally, who's won over his players and a guy that, that you like as a coach, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, we talked, you're hearing about changes in the front office at the general manager position, possible changes at the head coaching position. Continuity and consistency in coaching really helps your players develop. And when you upset that balance, it can really be difficult. Third and one, this is Jackson. Needed to get to the 20. That second effort will move the chains as the clock continues to run. So that long playoff drought now 15 years. Hard to believe, 1999, the last time this organization tasted the postseason. And what I mean by that, if you change your general manager, you change your coach, remember, the general manager drafted players to fit Doug Marone's system. If you change your coaches, then now you're going to have to plug these players into a new system brought in by a new coach. First and 10, this is Dixon again, crosses the 35, close to the 40. Sally, the one common theme amongst all those teams that we just saw is the quarterback position. And that is the eternal question for a Buffalo Bills team that thought that they had their guy in E.J. Manuel. They benched him after just 14 games in his career. And until they figure who their long-term guy is, they're going to be stuck in neutral. And what happens, say, if you bring in a new head coach, that coach is going to say, well, E.J. Manuel is not my guy. I didn't draft him. In fact, they'll look at other players and say, well, maybe he's not my guy. And then you get just a turnstile, just bringing in new players, having your old players leave. And I think it arrests the development of your football team, particularly those young players like an E.J. Manuel. Early timeout taken by Marone, 7-3 Buffalo. Final 24 seconds of this first quarter, 7-3 Buffalo. Short touchdown strike on the Bills' first possession, Orton to Robert Woods. And then Steven Gostkowski getting the Patriots on the board, 7-3. A little trickery here, Orton fakes the other end, throwing to Dixon. Gets ahead to the 45-yard line, another Buffalo first down, and that will take us to the end of the first quarter. Seven-yard pass play to Dixon. As Bill Belichick trying to get his team right, they will have that first round by before they prepare for their another postseason bid here in Foxborough. 7-3 Bills, you're watching the NFL on CBS. Gillette Stadium, Foxborough, Massachusetts, 7-3 Buffalo. Trying to end that long 13-game road losing streak to the Patriots. They have never won in this stadium that opened back in 2002. Spiro Dita, Solomon Wilcox, our producer Vic Frank, Chris Fenson, our director. Week 17 of the NFL season, first and 10, Orton from the gun. 
Fakes the handoff to Dixon. Has time up the seam. It completes. That's Woods. Second year receiver able to move the sticks again. 20 yards through the air. And Hort is six of his first eight. Yeah, he's starting to pick this Patriot secondary apart. And that's simply because the pressure on Kyle Orton is non-existent. They're not getting any pressure on the quarterback. He's getting into rhythm and he's finding some seams to complete passes against the secondary. Third play of 20 plus yards already. Offense that has struggled to get those explosive plays this season. First and 10 from inside the 35. Martin completes over the middle. That's Marquise Gray. Marquise Gray, I beg your pardon. As that clock continues to run. And again, no pass rush for New England. Sally, just to get back to the discussion and all the reports this week, uh, we've heard the reports of friction between Doug Marone and his general manager, Doug Whaley. We asked Doug last night, and he said, look, Doug and I are fine. They had that heated exchange that Doug acknowledged in the days leading up to the regular season. But he said that's part of the business. You have disagreements. We work through it. And we have been totally fine and on the same page this season. End around play. This is Watkins. Had the big 48-yard reception earlier. Able to fight his way down to the 22. Well, yeah, the general manager and head coach, they've had some conversations about personnel. He said that happens with just about every general manager and head coach. He did assure us that their relationship was whole. We've seen this team improve. Remember, they're without their star linebacker, Kiko Alonso, but yet they still have one of the top-rated defense because Whaley has brought in some phenomenal talent. I think they're missing some parts on offensive line. They can be better at quarterback as well. Another extended drive, first and ten. Spiller getting close to the 15-yard line. There also was the report about Bill Polian perhaps rejoining a Buffalo organization. This was Polian's quote in the Buffalo News today. He's saying, quote, it's about as wrong as can be. I'm not going to work for anyone Monday except ESPN. So Polian shooting down those rumors. You know, this time of year, you get a lot of that, Sally. Well, he's a future Hall of Famer. He's one of the best that has ever done it in terms of being a general manager. But change for change's sake is not the way to go. Over the middle on a second and five play. That's Gray again, the second year tight end out of Minnesota. Down to the 10. And enough for a Buffalo first down. And I think even Bill Polian would tell you that constantly changing the general manager and the head coach whether it's the Buffalo Bills or any other team, it's very hard to develop players. It's very hard to have some consistency in your organizational structure. And so to continue down this path when we've seen improvement, I don't think it's a bad idea. First and goal. This is Jackson finding the edge, breaking tackles down to the five. Brought down by Chandler Jones. And so far, it has been Buffalo dictating the pace in this first half. Yeah, and they're eating time of possession. This is now an 11 play 75 yard drive against Bill Belichick's defense. This is not the kind of execution when we spoke with him on Friday that he wanted from his offense, who we've seen already a three and out, and then his defense, their inability to get off the field. Keep in mind for the Patriots among the inactives today, Dante Hightower, the very talented linebacker, and Brandon Browner are both out dealing with some nagging injuries. This is Jackson inching closer to the goal line. Third and goal coming up. For guys like Vince Wilfork, he's in there. <laughs> he's a dominant force up front. Chandler Jones, Rob Nikovich, Akeem Ayers, the guys who are going to have to fuel this defense in the postseason, they're out there right now, and this is what the coach wanted. Get a stop at critical moment, certainly on third down, down inside your red zone. on their lead now at 10 just poor alignment also look you're gonna see it they're just gonna slam it right down in here and once they get going down inside then they're just gonna be able to get down into the end zone just an easy run right up the middle last time the Bills won a road game at New England was 2000 Doug Flutie their quarterback against a Patriots team led by Drew Bledsoe. 
One after by Carpenter is good. 13 play, 80 yard drive, and it's 14 to three Buffalo on CBS. What a start for the Buffalo Bills. Tom Brady and the Patriots down 11. Opening minutes of the second quarter from Gillette Stadium in Foxborough. Impressive extended drive. Their second already in this first half. They go 80 yards in 13 plays to push their lead to 11. Jordan Gay, their kickoff specialist. And that's why it boots it through the back of the end zone as Brady will have it from the 20. We go back to New York, get an update. J.B. and Boomer. Give Chase some love. Hey, Solomon, is this a touchdown by a wide receiver in Kansas City or not? No, it's not. It's a fumble recovery by Travis Kelsey as Dwayne Bowe fumbles it going into the end zone. Chase Daniel on the day, 9 of 9, 72 yards. Kansas City takes a 10-0 lead over San Diego. Solomon, we were hoping. Back to Spiro Ditas. That was a good pump fake, Boomer. Uh, you had me going on that one. You had me. Boy, for people that thought that that would be a walk in the park for the Chargers, think again. Arrowhead among the toughest stadiums to play in for an opponent. Boy, Amendola has been right in the thick of a couple of heated exchanges in this first half. Here locked up with Aaron Williams. These two teams don't like one another. Doug Marone, he talked about it. He says, you know, in his two years here now as the head coach of the Bills, he has yet to get a win against Bill Belichick and the Patriots. He's won games against all the other divisional opponents, but not here. Second and four from just outside the 25. This is Blunt. Cuts back, picks up a yard, maybe two. Sadly, we visited with Belichick as penalty marker is thrown. We've got the call here from Terry McCauley. Holy. Offense number 62. 10-yard penalty. Second down. We asked him about the, the balancing act with deciding who to play and who to rest today. And that's not an easy decision for a coach to make. No, and he has lost players in a season finale in years where they were going into the playoffs in 2009. Lost Wes Welker in the season finale. Lost Rodney Harrison at the end of the 2006 season. Neither played in the postseason. And he said, you tell me what players that are going to get hurt, and I won't play them. Uh, but he did say when players are playing hard, he said it usually turns out right, and we've got other things to work on in this game here today. We saw Jimmy Garoppolo. We expect to see him today for heavy stretches. As that pass for Tim's incomplete, late market comes in. Coverage on the play by Brooks. Making the start today for Gilmore. Pass interference, offense number 84, penalties decline, third down. It's on Tim's. Well, this was the injury in a nightmare scenario. Week 17 in Houston, Welker going down, tore up that left knee, carted off the field. And not the image that Patriots fans wanted heading into the postseason. Rob Gronkowski not playing today, neither is Julian Edelman. Some of the weapons Tom Brady's going to need as they head into the postseason. Gronkowski having an incredible season. As he rests up for the postseason, third and 14 at Buffalo front, even without Darius, who's headed to the Pro Bowl, giving Brady everything they could handle. Nigel Bradham coming with the pressure. Mario Williams there as well, and the Patriots will punt. Well, this defense is as good as they get. Look at there's the blitzing Bradham right there, and then Mario Williams, 94, contains Brady. Forcing him to get rid of him. Brady already frustrated in the early going of today's game. So Sally Brady wanted to play today to get some momentum going into the playoffs. You, you know that he's down in Belichick. He wants to stay in the game. Only a field goal to show for their efforts till this point. Now it's punt fielded by Fig Penn. And a short field for Kyle Orton, who's got an 11-point lead, 922 to play. 42-yard punt from Allen. Fourteen to three. Kyle Orton and this Buffalo offense will be awfully impressive at the start. Orton nine of eleven. Sally for 137 yards and a touchdown. The, probably the best we've seen them in their last four games. Looking very good, very sharp and crisp against the Patriots today. Three possessions already. They've had two 80-yard drives that have culminated with touchdowns. 
First and ten, Orton short pass. This is Spiller. Last week knocking the rust off that eight-week absence. There are the two quarterbacks that we've seen from Buffalo. Kyle Orton, six and five as a starter after taking over for Manuel after week four. And as you can see, a higher completion percentage certainly has come out and won them some games, but more productive in the passing game and not nearly as many turnovers. Remember, in critical games against the Green Bay Packers, Orton was able to lead them to a win. Even against a really good Detroit football team, Orton was able to come away a winner. Second and eight. Orton under pressure. He loses the sack. Not the second time. Ball comes loose. Still loose. Who's got it? Patriots football. Jamie Collins missed initially, then got to Orton, forced to fumble. What a season it's been for Collins. And then Collins recovering the football. Well, Collins just stays with it. He's going to harass Kyle Orton. Orton becomes disoriented in the pocket, pays for it. Hit that fumble. Tom Brady not wanting to end his afternoon, which is three points, back onto the field. Sally, you like this move? The only reason why I like the move, because look at the field position. You want to pay off the turnover by Jamie Collins and try to put points on the board. First and ten, they mark it from the 44. Excellent protection, Brady near side, incomplete. Tim Wright, the tight end, had it. Unable to maintain the catch through contact with the turf. As we go back to the sack fumble by Collins. There's Jamie Collins, and C.J. Spiller is going to try to pick him up, but he overwhelmed Spiller, but then Orton gets disoriented. See, now he's watching the pass rush. He watched him look behind himself, trying to find someone to throw the ball, and ends up running back into Collins, who really stayed with the play, continued to hustle, and even recovered the fumble himself. Fourth sack of the season for Collins, and his fourth forced fumble. Also recovered the fumble on that sequence. Second and ten, and around play. This is the foul. Has some real estate inside the 40, close to the first down marker. Runs out of bounds right at the 35. And this is the season that it has been for Colin Solly. He has helped this defense in a number of ways. Yeah, we saw him get an interception last week against Geno Smith and the New York Jets. And you can see, not only getting the sack, but the forced fumble and fumble recovery. He is a talent because he can cover tight ends in space. Some of the most athletic tight ends you put Collins on them, and he'll lock them down. And you go back a week prior, had the blocked field goal against Miami. That led to a long touchdown return by Kyle Arrington. Third and one, three. Stiff arming his man, Graham. What a tackle in open space by Corey Graham. One on one with Vereen. Short of the first down. Got to be able to tackle in open space. Vereen is as shifty as they come. Look at the nice bounce. Then the stiff arm, but yet, Vereen tackle just short of that first down marker by Graham. Looks like. Patriots are going to go for it. Why not? One seed locked up. Brady's still on the field. Belichick's going to roll the dice. Fourth and one. Brady quick drop for a side. First down. Catch for Reed. Inside the 30. Forced out at the 26 by Nigel Bradham. They pick up a dozen and move the sticks. You can tell Brady trusts Vereen. He throws the ball right away. They rub off Bradham, forcing him to create space between he and Vereen. Quick throw for Brady, creates the first down. Look at Brady's numbers to this point. Vereen among the top receiving running backs in the NFL. Fifth in receiving yards, fifth in catches among backs. With Gary Blunt, like a battering ram inside the 20. First down marker right at the 16-yard line. And so Brady Sally trying to Get this offense in a good frame of mind before they head into that first round bye. You know, this offense is moving. They are having opportunities, Spiro. We've seen drops by Steve Maneri, the backup tight end. We've seen another drop even on this possession by Tim Wright. So the tight ends are getting open against this Bills defense. Wouldn't be surprised if they go back to one here. 
Saw Josh McDaniels, second stint as Bill Belichick's offensive coordinator calling the plays here on second and two. Brady wrapped up and sacked. Pass protection had been so strong for this club. Gave up four sacks last week at the Jets. Stephen Charles making the start today for the injured Darius getting to Brady. Look at Charles coming right up the gut. Just overwhelms number 67, the guard, Josh Klein. Knocks him back, walks him right into Brady. And remember, Brady talked about it when we spoke with him. Hard to get the ball down the field when the passing pocket is so crowded with rush defenders. Only the 21st time Brady has been sacked this year. Fewest since 2009. Loss is seven. Makes it third and ten. Bills coming on the edge. Blitz picked up nicely. Brady throws in zone. Incomplete. Too high for the bell. So on fourth down and ten, Belichick will send out his field goal unit. And this has been the story for this Buffalo defense. They're the best in the business. Three of those four are going to the Pro Bowl. And Jerry Hughes, nine and a half sacks. He's not going, but his head coach Doug Marone called him in today and said, look, you're the reason why the other three are going. You keep playing like you are, and someday you'll be there. And Marone said the first phone call he made was to Hughes to tell him just that. Now he's been overshadowed by those other three, but has been a Pro Bowl caliber player, no doubt. 44-yard field goal by Gostkowski makes it 14 to 6. Buffalo in front. Up all your fantasy season was over. It's not. Play for free and you could win a trip to Super Bowl 50. Join today at NFL.com slash fantasy. A couple of Steven Gostkowski field goals. The only points for the Patriots. 14 to 6. Buffalo in front. The Patriots will have that first round by that they coveted. Home field advantage throughout the playoffs. But we should point out, Sally, six of the last nine Super Bowl champs did not have a first round bye, let alone that number one seed. Good point, but right now I'm trying to get Tom Brady out of here. This defense is ferocious at getting after the quarterback. And sooner or later, I think you got to start to protect him and give Jimmy Garoppolo an opportunity to play and see what he can do. <laughs> Garoppolo, the backup quarterback, expected to get heavy time in this game. This is a He's got a wide open seed. And the kicker, Gaskowski, pushes him out just short of the 50. We'll see when the officials mark the football. 49 yards on the return by Thigpen. Oh, this just in. These Buffalo Bills came to play. <laughs> they, they don't care if it's the number one seed, the AFC, New England Patriots. Thigpen trying to do something with it, trying to set the table for his offense and Kyle Orton to put more points on the board. Kicker showing some of his athletic ability as they mark it inside Patriots territory at the 47. Orton, if you've just joined us, 10 of his first 12 throwing for 139 yards and a touchdown. A pass intended for Watkins incomplete. So this is what uh, the Patriots have in front of them. The previous four times that they were the one seed here, you see what happened. They won the Super Bowl in 03 got to the Super Bowl in 2011 and uh, in between not the finish that they were hoping for is Robert Kraft their 72 year old owner looking on Billy Jean King also in that booth Wow hey, Mr. Kraft it's a better league because of men like him on second and ten they keep it on the ground to Jackson Kraft of course a Patriots fan long before he became the owner a season ticket holder isn't it one of the great stories in all the sports? Mr. Kraft used to be just a ticket, season ticket holder, and thought to himself, we cannot allow this team to leave the New England area. He figured, we just go ahead and buy the team. <laughs> and he's built them a beautiful stadium here at Patriots Place. Has taken this franchise to incredible heights as they gear up for what they hope will be another deep postseason run. Third and four, Orton from the gun. Over the middle, this is Jackson. Cuts back very close to the first down mark. Needed to get to the 37. Officials say he's got it. It'll be first and 10, Buffalo. The Bills right now are clicking. And, and you look at the Patriots' defense. They're not. They're not able to get pressure consistently on order. We saw Jamie Collins get him on that last possession. 
created the fumble. It's where they have to improve. Matt Patricia, their defense coordinator, they're going to go deep in the postseason, Spiro. They're going to have to provide consistent pressure on the opposing quarterback. First and 10, this is Anthony Booby Dixon. Using all 235 pounds on his frame for a six-yard run tackled by Jamie Collins. Sally, we mentioned the quarterback uh, questions for this club. Do you think their long-term guy is either Orton or E.J. Manuel? I do think the for now guy is Kyle Orton. I, I believe with a good offseason program, being there for the OTAs, the mini camp. Remember, they're very young at the wide receiver position. It's, they're going to need a veteran quarterback to help with their development. And I think with a good offseason for Kyle Orton, I think you'll see the offense improve. Anthony Dixon is the injured Bill. Timeout. 14-6 Buffalo, if you've just joined us. A couple of 80-yard touchdown drives orchestrated by Kyle Orton, who is 11 of 14 on the day, 143 yards and a touchdown. Looking for more here on second and five. C.J. Spiller. On with Anthony Dixon, able to walk off the field on his own power. Sally, I just asked you about Orton. You think that he is the, the better answer moving forward. What does the future hold for E.J. Manuel? I think for E.J. Manuel, you know, he's a first-round pick, just like Johnny Manziel in Cleveland, another first-round pick at the quarterback position. These NFL games are not the place to hold a tryout. The place to get better for someone like E.J. Manuel is every day in practice. There was a time in this league where you had to perform in practice first and convince the coaches to give you an opportunity to play on Sundays. Where does Orton go here on third and four? Orton puts it in on it, going far side, ends on for Watkins, incomplete. Darrell Revis, excellent coverage up the sideline. It'll be fourth down and four. Watkins thought he had Darrell Revis. But he ends up stuck on Revis Island, the jam at the line of scrimmage. Revis wins there, and then watch this play. He, he knocks it down, but he was able to reroute Sammy Watkins, who was running out of bounds. It wasn't going to be good anyway. You talk about cornerbacks and man-to-man -man coverage. There's none better in my mind than Darrell Revis because he can dominate and win at the line of scrimmage. Revis headed to his sixth Pro Bowl. Told us last week this is the best secondary he has played with in his career. 48-yard attempt by Carpenter is good as Buffalo able to salvage the field goal and extend their lead back to 11. Well, this was a matchup we were looking for all day. Another look at the Carpenter field goal. But uh, those two expected to battle for as long as Revis stays in the game. Revis against Watkins. Yeah, you can see it year after year. Schmidt barely knocks that one through. 2-14 remaining. We remind you that Week 17 continues later today on CBS and on Fox. And then tonight, the big one, Sunday Night Football on NBC to Pittsburgh. The Steelers and the Bengals with the winner taking the AFC North crown in what has been as wild a division race as we've seen in recent years. Look at Brady strapping it up, ready to come back in. But <laughs> there is Garoppolo. He's putting his helmet on. Got to warm up a bit as well. Garoppolo will get up and warm up ready for each possession. A rookie quarterback and Eastern Illinois man that they took with the second round pick. We'll be talking about him. At least we think before this game is over. Good looking kick. Amendola will not play and takes a knee. And so Brady will start again from the 20. Brady, if you've just joined us, 6 of 14, 73 yards. Sadly, the uh, pass protection issues that they had last week, a lot of sack on their last possession. What have you seen from their offense till this point? Well, I, I have not seen them consistently be able to protect Tom Brady, but I have seen where they have opportunities to complete passes. Receivers, tight ends, they put the ball on the ground. They have not managed to secure balls that were thrown to them very cleanly. First and 10, Brady near second. It is caught by Timms, who had just one reception before today. Already in this game, Timms has four catches, 39 yards. That time picks up eight. I like this Timms. Now, he's done a good job in Josh McDaniels' offense. 
Ball thrown to him. He's catching it. Two-minute warning as this first half winds down. 17-6, Buffalo. Final two minutes before halftime. 17-6, Buffalo. A Bills team mathematically eliminated from postseason contention against a Patriots team that's locked up the one seed, but still trying to play for some offensive continuity and a better mindset before they head into their first round by. On second and two play, Shane Vereen trying to get to the 30. That's where the first down marker is. Looks like he's about a yard short. As the clock continues to run, Patriots have all three timeouts. Yeah, and Brady wants to get something going in the two-minute offense, but they struggle to run the ball against this Buffalo Bills defense. They're struggling to be consistent throwing the ball and trying to protect Tom Brady. Kyle Williams up front, one of those pro bowlers on that defensive line, wreaking havoc in the Patriots' backfield. Third and one. A quarterback sneak by Brady, taking on that vaunted defensive front. That's enough for the first down as they move the sticks. And we'll mark it just outside the 30. You know, they want to take a shot down the field. That's what Brady told us. We want to be able to pick up chunks of yards in, in the vertical passing game. But they can't protect long enough for Brady to hold the ball. Patriots elect not to take the timeout. First and 10, Brady's pass for Amendola over the middle, incomplete. Amendola, disappointment till this point. There is a penalty marker behind the line of scrimmage. Holding, offense number 77. 10-yard penalty, first down. It's on Nate Solder. Well, if he didn't hold Jerry Hughes, Hughes would have had the sack. We told you they're not protecting Brady long enough to be able to hold the ball. Look, this would have been a sack had he not grabbed hold of Jerry Hughes. And then Amendola drops it. So we just saw a snapshot of the two things that I mentioned that has plagued this Patriots offense today. Poor protection for the quarterback and just the inconsistency in catching the ball down the field. Brady from the gun, first and 20. This is for me. That Bills pursuit relentless Ty Powell, their second year linebacker and free agent pickup a couple of years ago on the tackle. So Belichick will be content to take his team off the field. They will not burn a timeout, at least at the moment, as we are inside of 40 seconds left. It's second and 21. You don't want to burn a timeout. You leave time on the clock. So when you punt it, then the Bills end up having that time. Brady all day to throw, everyone's covered. Tucks it away, will slide ahead to the 28-yard line. As we remind you again, the Verizon Halftime Report coming up next. We're sending to JB and the guys in New York. First half scores, highlights, and analysis on the Verizon Halftime Report coming up after the commercial break. Well, if the goal was to get this offense in gear, I don't think they accomplished that objective as they scored just six points in the first half and trailed Buffalo by 11. The Verizon Halftime Report is next. You're watching the NFL on CBS. lead for Buffalo in New England since 1994. Hard to believe. Up 11 as we get you ready for the second half. Spiro Thita Solomon Wilcox back with you. The NFL on CBS continuing. Kyle Orton very sharp in that first half. A Buffalo team out of postseason contention and without some key regulars Tom Brady in that offense struggle. Well you can tell that the Bills came in here determined to get a win and I think it began with the efficiency of their quarterback Kyle Orton completed 11 passes to eight different receivers, and then two of their red zone possessions, they've turned them into touchdowns while the defense has kept Tom Brady out of the end zone, forcing them to settle for field goals down inside the red zone. All right, let's take a look at the Bulls game changer. This was Buffalo's opening drive. Orton marched him down the field. They covered 80-plus yards, and the short touchdown strike to Robert Woods, the second-year receiver. That got the party started at 17-6. Buffalo in front. They will kick. Patriots will have the football as we take a look, Sally, at the first half stats. Oh, and take a look at it. Forcing the Bills to turn it over. But the Patriots can only 
create three points off that turnover. And then the 80-yard drives. The Bills have been able to hold on to the football and stay on the field against the Patriots' defense. So right now the Patriots are looking for greater execution, and I think we're going to see their second-string quarterback, Jimmy Garoppolo, as we enter the second half. So it looks like Brady's afternoon is over. Brady's number is 8 for 16, 80 yards. Did not throw a touchdown, no picks. Tough to really evaluate, Sally, where this offense is without Julian Edelman, their leading receiver, who's out a second straight game, of course, after the concussion and the thigh injury. He's expected to be ready, of course, once the postseason begins in a couple of weeks for them. And no Rob Gronkowski, who is not on the injury report, by the way, this week. Yeah, but what we can evaluate, we can evaluate the fact that they haven't been able to protect their quarterback and the receivers haven't been consistent in catching the ball for Tom Brady. You mentioned some of the players that Bill Belichick rested today. Two of their starting offensive linemen are out. Dan Connolly is second straight week and Sebastian Vollmer out with a back injury. So here comes the rookie Jimmy Garoppolo. Mop-up duty in a couple of games earlier in the season. A young man that this franchise and Bill Belichick, Solomon, is very, very high on. Second-round pick out of Eastern Illinois. Well, they like the fact that he's smart. And, you know, what did Bill Belichick tell us? That his skill set fit our offense perfectly, and that is the ability to get the ball out quickly and accurately. Garoppolo has had 34 total snaps in five appearances. Came on in relief of Brady against Kansas City and Chicago in weeks four and eight, respectively. So 17-6, Patriots down 11 as we begin the third quarter. Garoppolo's pass for Amendola near side. He makes the catch and forced out of bounds by Denoris Searcy. So Garoppolo, the second round pick. Sally, they like his football IQ, as you said, and very good size at that position. From Eastern Illinois, where he set passing records, surpassing, guess who? New Orleans Saints head coach Sean Payton, who was once the quarterback there, and even passed Tony Romo, Tony Romo, a former quarterback at Eastern Illinois. Second and five, Garoppolo drops back. Under some pressure, set! Jarius Wynn says welcome back to the rookie. Second sack for Wynn today. And this defensive front has not skipped a beat without Darius. You know, Garoppolo wanted to go down the field, but he saw that his intended receiver was covered. See, right there, he has to eat it. But hold on to the football. Don't force it into coverage if you're the young quarterback. And you got to protect it as Wynn closes in for the sack. So third and eighth, they dump him for a loss of three. With just over a minute gone by in this third quarter. Garoppolo from the gun as they line up just inside the 22. Garoppolo flushed out. Again, it's Wynn giving chase. And the pass intended for Wright thrown behind his target. And incomplete. And the Buffalo defense once again getting off the field. Garoppolo does have the athleticism to elude pressure. He's going to roll to his right. He doesn't really find anyone to go to with the football. You can see I think Mario Williams, 94, was in his way as he was under pressure. And Sally, so difficult for a, a backup to come in. You get little to no snaps and reps during the practice weeks as the number two guy in the regular season. But uh, certainly some invaluable opportunities here for Garoppolo in the second half. This is a big pan. Had a long 49-yard return in the first half. 51-yard punt, a return of only four. Kyle Orton back onto the field, up 11. Well, the 8-7 Bills already most wins that they've posted in a season since 2004. A win today gives them their first winning campaign since 2004. Over a decade. And that's certainly a big deal for Doug Morrall, and that's Fred Jackson. Getting close to the 35-yard line. Jackson nominated this week, Sally, for the Walter Payton Man of the Year. Recognizes community service and on-field excellence, one of the bigger, more underrated awards given out by the NFL. He is one of the toughest runners in the National Football League. And nice to know that he cares about the community he lives in and wants to play a positive role. Out of Cole College in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. 
Undrafted player back in 06. What a career Jackson has put together. Orton on second and seven. Slings it up the middle. Intended for the New Jersey native, Chris Hogan. Speaking of the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award, another nominee on the other side of the field is Devin McCourty, Pro Bowler back in 2010. Had a chance to visit with him on Friday, two-time All-Pro. What a career he's put together here playing for Bill Belichick. I love what he told us when he talked about moving forward. He said, records are out of the window when you enter the postseason. The best team usually wins. He said, we want to be that team. Orton surging like in the first half on third and seven. Set. Akeem Ayers leading the charge for New England. Second sack of Orton today. Yeah, he and Will Fork. And take a look at it. Ayers is going to come here. Will Fork's going to work his way around also. They're able to get pressure. Look at Ayers comes all the way around. As Will Fork slams the door shut up the middle, Ayers comes off the edge. Ayers acquired in that trade with Tennessee back in late October. What a pickup he has been. Fourth sack of the season. Was so huge for them in the absence of Chandler Jones. They missed about six weeks with that hip injury. Amendola on the return. Takes a hit as he crosses the 35. Penalty marker thrown. 47-yard punt by Colton Schmidt. And a call from our referee, Terry McCauley. During the return, Illegal block in the back, receiving team number 21, 10-yard penalty, first down, timeout. That's Malcolm Butler, the culprit for New England. Ayers coming with the pressure for the Patriots. Better than 68,000 here at Gillette Stadium. Sun has come through the clouds, overcast day earlier. Jimmy Garoppolo, their backup rookie quarterback onto the field. It'll be his show here in the second half. He hands off to Garrett Blunt. Oh, and you think of elite college quarterbacks, Eastern Illinois may not be the first program that comes to mind, but some pretty good company for Garoppolo, Sean Payton, whom you mentioned, and Tony Romo. You know Tony Romo was a good player there, but for Garoppolo to pass those players at the quarterback position tells you that he is some kind of player. and He's got a very good skill set. Very good ability. Second and four. Here is Blunt again. Finds the outside. He's got the first down of the left more. Inside Buffalo territory. Blunt back from his one game absence, getting the crowd fired up. Bradham forced him out, but not before he burns him for 34. Well, they weren't able to get the run game going when Brady was in in the first half, but they're getting it going now. It's just going to be outside. And look at. It's just going to be a nice zone blocking. Getting right behind the tackle, then behind the tight end. And able to get to the second level. Really good blocking on the edge. 250 pounds. Blunt has great speed. Second stint here in New England for Blunt. Of course, released by Pittsburgh early in the season. Signed a couple of days later by Bill Belichick here in late November. And if they can get him going, Sally, no Jonas Gray, of course, they feel like their postseason chances will be very much bolstered. And I said he has great speed. You can see he can pull away from people at 250 pounds. I think he's faster and quicker than you would expect for a man his size at 250 plus pounds. So running attack ranked 18th in the NFL it has been the weakness of this offense that is first in the league, averaging Nearly 31 points per game. Garoppolo play action on second and six. He loses the sack initially, and then he's going down. Just short of the 40, Mario Williams, who's headed to his fourth Pro Bowl, getting there for Buffalo, as the pressure has been relentless. It's going to be Denora Cersei coming off the top of the screen. See, and that forces Garoppolo to step up, and from there he's in trouble because Mario Williams can close in for the sack. Brandon Spikes, the former Patriot, also helping out on the sack. Big day for Wing. And the rest of that Buffalo front. Garoppolo from the gun, third and six. Pocket collapses again. 
And they get to him for a second straight play. Jerry Hughes, the Pro Bowl snub. And that will push his season set total to ten and a half. Penalty marker comes in at the end of the play on the Buffalo side of the field, just inside the 40. Boy, Amendola has been in the middle of a couple of skirmishes today, exchanging some words. Defense. Holding, defense number 37, penalties decline. Holding, defense number 20, five-yard penalty, automatic first down. So they accept the penalty against Corey Graham, and that is a big one. And that's where Garoppolo wanted to go with the ball, coming back to his left side. But see, he's got to get rid of the ball. That clock in his head has to be much faster, quicker. And not every pass is going to be a completion, Spiro. You have to just get rid of it. You can see the hold on the back end by Roby, 37, who's defending Amendola. Clock continues to run. We come up on nine minutes left in the quarter. Brandon Bolden takes a direct snap. Trying to find some daylight. Gets close to the 30. Tackle made by Preston Brown. We mentioned the Pro Bowlers headed to Arizona for this Buffalo defense. Williams Darius, who's out today with a knee injury, and Kyle Williams going to the Pro Bowl Sally for the second straight year. Well deserving. These guys have had one well of a season. And I remember we had our meeting last night. We said, were there ever all four guys who went to the Pro Bowl from a defensive line? Because Jerry Hughes. He deserves the go. He nearly was their fourth. And the round play, Garoppolo give it to LaFell. Inside the 30. First down marker at the 25-yard line. LaFell getting close. Cersei forces him out. They'll celebrate America's greatest stars at the Kennedy Center with performances by Bruno Mars, Bruce Springsteen, and Lady Gaga. Stephen Colbert hosts Tuesday, 9, 8 Central. Only CBS. We fell about a yard short. Mark the football just outside the 26 on third and one. Take the hand off this Garoppolo. He's got the first down. Rookie quarterback showing how fearless he can be. Moves the sticks. It'll be first and ten Patriots. He comes up batting his eyelashes. <laughs> as if he needs to clear the cobwebs. But yeah, it's just a read option. He reads it perfectly. It's a zone read. He's going to hit that first down marker, but he's going to take a lick at the end of the play. Garoppolo, the 23-year-old Illinois native, taking over for Brady here at the start of the second half. First and 10, Blunt, featured runner on this drive. Garoppolo, Sally, you go back to the preseason, had some early hiccups that you'd expect from a rookie quarterback, but you talk to people around the organization, Bill Belichick telling us the other day that he carries himself with a demeanor that you don't often see from a rookie player in the NFL. Yeah, yeah Bill said that we thought he would be good in our system and said that he's got a chance to be a really good quarterback. Now, he's a rookie. He's under that four-year rookie contract, so he's got to develop. He's got to do it behind one of the NFL all-time greats who doesn't like to give you any of his practice reps. No, he does not. But Garoppolo has his chance here with the Patriots having locked up that one seed in the AFC playoffs. Second and ten. Garoppolo flushed out, hit on the release. That one sputtering through the air. Amendola was the nearest receiver. Pressure coming from Duke Williams, the safety. We go back to New York in an update with JB. Spiro and Solomon coming up at 425 p.m. Most will see Cam Newton guiding his Carolina Panthers against Matty Ice and the Atlanta Falcons. We know this is a win and in scenario. The winner will be the NFC South title holder. Back to Spiro and Solomon. It's an NFL cliffhanger, JB. Battle for the NFC South. How about the NFC playoff picture? There are five teams entering today that could still secure that number one seed. Garoppolo on third and ten completes over the middle. This is LaFell. LaFell close to the ten. And right at the first down marker appears to be short. Here's what the postseason picture looks like in the NFC. Seattle, Detroit, Dallas, Green Bay, and Arizona all with a shot at number one. And if Dallas win in their early game, they'll have 12 wins and at least hold the number one seed until later today when Detroit and Seattle will play. Second time today 
that Belichick's going for it on fourth down. Garoppolo's going to take it. Take it on a tackler, Ron Brooks. That is a major league collision. Garoppolo brought down short. And Buffalo takes over on downs. Garoppolo's going to make them earn it. Lowering the shoulder, lowering the boom. But coming up short for the first down. Seventeen six Buffalo, eleven point lead, just past the six minute mark near Gillette Stadium in Foxborough. Spiritus, Sam Wilcox, our producer Vic Frank, Chris Spencer, our director, rest of our CBS crew on this final Sunday of the NFL regular season. First to ten Orton. This is Jackson crosses the twenty and brought down at the twenty one. Want to take you back earlier here this afternoon, an incredible moment. Pete Frady's the. 30-year-old celebrating a birthday today. The young man, former Boston College baseball player, diagnosed with ALS in 2012, credited with starting the Ice Bucket Challenge last summer. Robert Kraft and this organization bringing him out, honoring him with really an emotional moment here. Everyone was on their feet. They sang happy birthday to him. This was the scene last summer. The Patriots becoming the first NFL team to start the Ice Bucket two. Challenge. Robert Kraft, the honor, Bill Belichick, and the rest of the players behind him. And that started the phenomenon. Yeah, they would even challenge the other teams in the AFC East. Miami, Buffalo, the New York Jets all accepted the challenge. Even I accepted the challenge. Did you do it, Spiro? I did. Yes, I did. It was cold. It was very cold. Chris Hogan on the reception. I thought about it, believe me, but uh, boy, it was, it was all for just an incredible cause as uh, Frady's gets all the recognition that he deserves, deserves even more of it, and what a moment for the young man here earlier this afternoon. He was an excellent baseball player at Boston College, so here is a young man that's been through a whole lot. First to 10 or Right into the face of the pressure, completing to Watkins. He's had an incredible rookie season. We mentioned where he stands, approaching 1,000 yards. Already has set new franchise rookie records for catches and receiving yards. Sadly, they traded up to draft him and took him fourth overall. What a year it's been for Watkins. You know, in fact, they gave up a first-round pick and a fourth-round pick in the upcoming 2015 draft. So they expect him to be a great one, and only time will tell. There was a lot of great wide receivers in this year's draft class. This is second and five. Oh, Orton slings it near side and incomplete. Hogan wants the penalty, doesn't get it. Sally, how about our wisdom of Solomon here in Week 17? Take a look at the bumper crop with receivers in the 2014 draft class. Mike Evans for Tampa Bay. We know about him. And Odell Beckham Jr., human highlight reel. And then Sammy Watkins has the chance to be the first wide receiver as a rookie to go over 1,000 yards in a single season. But other rookies like Calvin Benjamin for the Panthers, Brandon Cooks for the Saints, John Brown for the Cardinals. Don't forget about Jarvis Landry with the Dolphins. A great rookie class of receivers in this year's draft. Play clock down to one on third and five. Jackson, not going to get it, and not even close. Akeem Ayers, Rob Minkovich among the tacklers, and the Patriots defense getting off the field. Well, they try to run a read option. I'm not so sure how much of an option it is because you don't expect Orton to keep it himself. Good defense by the Patriots. So Ninkovich among the important defensive players still in the game for Matt Patricia and Bill Belichick. Is this one now nearing the latter stages of the third quarter? And Abdullah from his own 30 has a seat. Inside Buffalo territory, down to the 45-yard line. Second time we've seen a kicker make a stop today. Colton Schmidt makes what could have been a touchdown-saving stop. 25-yard. Late stages, third quarter. 17-6 Buffalo. Tom Brady's day is over. So the rookie quarterback of Eastern Illinois, Jimmy Garoppolo, on the field. Second. Possession for him. 
third possession. Play action here. First and ten. Garoppolo already has been sacked three times. Here he completes over the middle to Brandon LaFell, beating Ron Brooks. 20 yards and a Patriots first down. And you can see them using the athleticism of Garoppolo moving the pocket. Throws the ball with really good accuracy and timing. You can see that quick release Bill Belichick had talked about as he made the completion to Brandon LaFell crossing the field. Ball marked inside the 25. First and 10, the rookie will work from the gun. Quick strike near side, Amendola. Picks up maybe a half yard on the play. Sally, you mentioned some of the hiccups that Garoppolo had to endure and fight through. Because he reacted so well, it led to them trading away Ryan Mallett, who, of course, is a pretty good backup quarterback in his own right. That's the confidence that Belichick has in this young man. Yeah, a tremendously high football IQ, adapted well to the system, and a different skill set than Ryan Mallett who sort of mirrored what Tom Brady brings to the table. And to have an athletic quarterback like Garoppolo, maybe it will help this football team in the future. LaFell comes in motion on second and ten. Garoppolo over the middle, incomplete. That one intended for Hoa Manawanui. Aaron Williams on the coverage. Back to New York in an update with J.B. Boomer setup plays are important. Well, maybe Cleveland does have a rookie quarterback after all. Connor Shaw out of South Carolina moving around. He's going to find Taylor Gabriel all the way down to the two-yard line. That's going to be followed up by Terrence West. Two-yard touchdown run. Look who's in the lead. Cleveland leads Baltimore 10 to 3. Back to Spiro Ditas. Steve Spurrier knows something about Connor Shaw, guys. What a wild year it's been in the NFL. Garoppolo over the middle, completes Amendola. You mentioned the disappointing stint for Amendola here last season, plagued by the injuries. Last week, season highs in receptions with eight and 63 yards and a win at the Jets. And what I'm seeing now from Garoppolo, a quick processing in his progression. The ball is coming out quickly, and he's completing passes with great accuracy. Belichick will send out his field goal unit. Steven Gostkowski. So from 24 and 44 yards out so far today. 35-yard attempt. Allen, the punter, is the holder. Good snap. And a perfect boot from Gostkowski. The NFL's leader in points now at 153. Oh, nice to be young, huh? Those youngsters brave in the elements, temperatures in the upper 40s. They, they oh. learn them early. They teach them early. <laughs> as crazy a sports town as there is in the country. And these fans geared up for another postseason run. Right now down to the Bills, 17 to 9 with 37 seconds left in the quarter. Marcus Thickpen. Run out of bounds just outside the 20-yard line. So Kyle Orton back onto the field. Orton so far 13 of 19. We mentioned some of the Pro Bowlers. This is Slater, of course, one of the top gunners in the NFL. This is all Matthew Slater continues to do Sally's fourth straight trip to the Pro Bowl. He's an elite special team player. Might as well have a condo, whether it's in Hawaii or Phoenix, where this year's Pro Bowl will be played. It's there seemingly every year. Doug Marone said last night, Slater, one of the best special teams players he has ever seen. This is Jackson. Oh, snack. And run out of bounds by Tavon Wilson. Speaking of Pro Bowl, here are the Patriots headed to the star-studded event Brady going for a tenth time and Rob Gronkowski was had an incredible season going for number three and their hope is not to play in the Pro Bowl All right because if you're playing in the Super Bowl Spiro <laughs> it means you're not available to play at the Pro Bowl the game will be a week before the Super Bowl in Glendale but uh, these Patriots certainly have bigger plans once that postseason bid begins we are through three and Foxborough will Return to Gillette after this. You're watching the NFL on CBS.
Start of the fourth quarter, we mentioned earlier, Buffalo has never won here at Gillette Stadium. Open in 2002, 13 straight road losses. That goes back to the old stadium here in Foxborough. 17-9, Buffalo in front. Trying to get to nine wins for the first time since 04. Fred Jackson crosses the 30, close to the 35 yard line. So, Sally, what about the Patriots? You know they've got that first round bye. Super Bowls in three of Brady's first four years here with the Patriots, but you look at their track record since four and five in their last nine postseason games. Yeah, they understand it. They, they know it's a competitive league. There's no doubt about it. They are the 10 pound gorilla that everyone is trying to knock off. And so everyone's going to give the Patriots and Bill Belichick their best shot, especially when you get into the postseason. First and 10 after the Jackson run. A little delayed handoff to Dixon. Wide body back finds the edge. And he's run out of bounds at the 40. You know, talk to people around the organization as we take a look at some of the teams that they can face in the last two trips to the AFC Championship game. One of those, yeah, one is a loss right here. At Gillette Stadium to the Baltimore Ravens. And then last year against the Denver Broncos on the road. So the, all the hard work of earning home field advantage have to be able to make it pay off. Remember, two wins in the postseason right here at Gillette, and you're going to the Super Bowl. Second and three. Draw play. This is Spiller. Another first down for Buffalo as they move the chains yet again. Well, these are the numbers. Sally, they have fared very well against playoff bound teams as you see some of the victories that they've had on the bottom of your screen they beat all of the division leaders in the AFC Denver Cincy Indianapolis they've even beaten teams like Detroit who right now is tied for first place in the air in the NFC North only blemish for them that loss at Green Bay a game in which they were very competitive could have gone either way that they are only loss, in fact, over the last 11 weeks. And when you compare this team, Sally, to the last couple of years, a lot of the experts say because of the improvements that they've made defensively to help those guys, specifically on the back end with Revis and Browner, this is the best team that they've had in a couple of years. And everyone was ready to crown the Packers after that win. I would say not so fast, because we'll talk about it when we come back. Well, it's been a long, frustrating year for Buffalo's offensive line. Cordy Glenn, who has been, at least in years past, one of their better blockers, struggled this year. Looks to be in considerable pain as he walked off on his own power. This is Gray. Makes the reception inside Patriots territory. Brought down at the 44. Speaking of injured offensive lineman, Nate Solder has an injury, will not return, starting tackle. And obviously now a concern for Bill Belichick. Yeah, we were talking about the Patriots that week 13 loss to the Packers. 26-21 was the final. Remember, the Patriots played that game without three of their top defenders in Chandler Jones, Dante Hightower, and their third corner, Kyle Arrington. Third and one. Keep it on the ground. Dixon stuffed. Didn't get it. It'll be fourth down and inches. That's just making a play defensively for the Patriots. Moving the line of scrimmage. Take a look. Just knocking them back. Big number 97, Allen Branch. Right in the middle of everything. He created a new line of scrimmage in the backfield of the Buffalo Bills. Also, Jonathan Casillas making the start for the injured Dante Hightower. Held out today for precautionary reasons with a mild shoulder injury. The injury to Solder, by the way, we're told is a knee. Nothing on the extent of it. I hope it's just a minor injury, but uh, will not return for the Patriots. There's Colton Schmidt. Amendola signaling fair catch. It's Brady. Uh, excuse me, Garoppolo will have it when we come back in a 17-9 game. Great CBS crew that has done all the behind-the-scenes work for us this season. As we welcome you back to Foxborough, 17-9. Jimmy Garoppolo, the backup rookie quarterback, onto the field on first and 10. Over the middle to LaFell. 
Sadly, they have pressured him. They've sacked Garoppolo already twice. They pick up another first down here, but he has stood right in the face of the pressure and responded very nicely. Oh, that was just a nice throw and a good read on the defense. Take a look. Soon as LaFell turns around, that ball's right on top of him because it was well anticipated, well thrown by Jimmy Garoppolo. Saw LaFell in some pain. Gingerly walked to the New England sideline. Last thing that these Patriots fans want to see in this kind of a game. First and 10, Garoppolo. Boy, he somehow escapes the sack. Pump fakes, and now he's going to run with it. Takes out a hard hit once again. Brooks, who lit him up earlier. Little playful chatter between the two. Pressure coming initially from Hughes. Garoppolo, the escape artist, got away. That's right. He had him dead to rights right there. And look at Garoppolo. We told you. He was athletic, and look at this, really nifty. And I think it was Brady who said he had a lot of poise and patience. I think we saw an example of it there. Boy, the guy he faked out was the very impressive rookie linebacker for Buffalo, Preston Brown, their leading tackler. Four-yard run, sets up a second and six. Amendola in motion, fake the end around to him. Garoppolo throws it right at the feet of Bolden. And incomplete. Back to New York and an update with JB. Jacksonville, no quit. Blake uh, Bortles, a uh, lateral to Cecil Shorts. He's going to throw it to Jordan Thomas out of the backfield. This is off of a Case Keenum fumble, his second turnover of the day. Jacksonville takes the lead over the Texans, 17-14. Spiro and Solomon. Boy, it makes perfect sense, right? The Jacksonville may win that game. It has been a topsy-turvy season in the NFL. Texans need a win, plus losses by both Baltimore and San Diego to get in. Third and six, Buffalo coming again. Garoppolo escapes again. And past the 40, lunges for the first down. Masterful play by the rookie. Oh, they love him here at Gillette Stadium. He brought the crowd to their feet, Spiro. <laughs> this is incredible. This is Houdini-like. He's... He sat there, at least it looked like he was, by a couple of defenders from Buffalo, and then they were able to hit the chalk for the first down. An incredible play. Garoppolo spun fully one way, then went back the other on another spin. And once for the first down. Nine yards to move the sticks. First and ten, Amendola, short catch and run. Inside Buffalo territory, tackle from the back by Hughes. So Amendola with the first down reception and Sally trying to get his confidence right before the playoffs. Well, Garoppolo is helping everyone's confidence in this offense because this is a fierce pass rush. As we said, the best in the National Football League. Tom Brady said this is as good a defense as we'll see all season long. And Garoppolo starts to make plays. You can sense the energy spreading throughout the huddle. Fourth catch for Amendola, 24 yards to set up a first and 10. Here's Garrett Blunt. Minimal pickup struggles to get even back to the line of scrimmage. And loses a yard on the play. Here is the current to the minute playoff picture in the AFC. We know New England, Denver, and Indianapolis are in. Cincinnati is clinched as well. Cincinnati, of course, has to play the big one tonight. And uh, San Diego, Sally. Right now, trailing 19-7. Second and 11 from just outside the 45. Garoppolo is going to take the shot. Amendola, the intended receiver. Brown wanted a penalty. They won't get one. It'll be third and long coming up. Amendola is matched up. He's going to run the wheel route. 23, Aaron Williams on top of the route. And I think had Amendola continued to try to get up the field as opposed to just conceding by throwing his arms up after contact was made, then maybe he'll get the penalty flag. But if you just throw your arms up immediately upon contact, not so sure the official is going to give you the benefit of the doubt. Third and 11. Garoppolo slings it over the middle, look out. Tim Wright crushed. Ron Brooks 
looks like may be penalized. Sally, you may see here a defenseless receiver penalty. Yeah, it looked like a forearm to the helmet. Personal foul on this area roughness. Illegal hit on the defenseless receiver. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Now we have seen some hard hitting in this game from Ron Brooks. Now take a look at this one. So Brooks is going to come from the outside right there. And, wow. <laughs> I'm not so sure I, yeah, I was wrong because I don't see a four. Now, did he hit a defenseless player? Yes. But they're going to say that was a helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit on a defenseless player. But I think the helmet hit the shoulder. And that's why they said that we may be putting those kind of plays under review. It looked like a miscommunication here between Garoppolo and Brandon Bolden on the play. Garoppolo turned one way, Bolden went the other. Not a lot of opportunity for those two to get much practice time during the season. Garoppolo has got to be showing his head coach, Bill Belichick, something in this game. He's got the offense moving. But what you really want to see is a young quarterback be able to get his team into the end zone. Looking from the gun on second and 11. Garoppolo under pressure, pockets collapses. Try to escape, and they'll get to him. Third time the rookie set. And finally, that Buffalo defense able to chase him down. Huge loss of 15. Manny Lawson and Jerry Hughes wrapped him up. Yeah, right now he's guilty of holding the ball too long. And then what we call running to darkness. See, you got to get rid of the ball. Now where are you going with it? To where are you going? And he tried that move maybe one time too many. Ran himself into trouble and literally ran himself into a sack. Hughes, who had the sack earlier negated by a Buffalo penalty. With a big play there for the defense. Third and 26 from the 46. Garoppolo again feels the pressure. Throws across his body, completes the teams. Still well short of the first down, needed to get to the 20. They pick up 19. He's wide open. And had he just turned up field, he could have easily had the first down. Sort of lost track of where he was on the field. So watch after he makes this catch. He just stops and go vertical. Look down the field, he's going to hit the first down marker. And that's why he's frustrated with himself. Penalty called on the play against the Patriots. No official announcement from Terry McCauley. But they mark it back all the way to the New England 44. Bill Belichick asking for an explanation. Offensive holding was the call. As that clock continues to run now inside six minutes. Garoppolo so far, 7 for 13, 67 yards. He's run for 16 on four rushes. Slings it over the middle, completes. That's right. Sliding catch at around the 40. One yard line, 14 yards over the middle. They'll go for it. You know Belichick on fourth down, right? He's not shot. No, he is not. He's already gone for it twice in this game. And now he's going to send out the punt unit. As Ryan Allen will boot it away. Can't say I'm blaming on fourth and 21. <laughs> <laughs> 17 to 9 Buffalo. Trying to end this 13 game road losing streak against the Patriots. In a game that has no postseason implication for the Patriots. Fair catch by Big Ben. 17 9 Buffalo. Eight-point Buffalo lead, 446 to play in this fourth quarter. Spiridita Salmon Wilcox, Gillette Stadium in Foxborough. On a first and ten play, Jackson. The old war horse still on the field. Getting close to the 12-yard line. Sally, how about the MVP race? Here are the candidates at this point. Tom Brady, who has won the award twice already in his career. Over 4,000 yards passing. A lot of people felt like Rodgers was, was the guy up until the hiccup here late in the season. Well, I think all the players up there have had a hiccup. But if there was ever a year to give it 
to a defensive player, this would be the year. J.J. Watt has been phenomenal in every single game. And any of those quarterbacks, including Tom Brady, they don't like playing against J.J. Watt. And he'll line up and play against any of those four guys any day of the week. I love the effort and energy he gives on every play. Our referee today is Terry McCauley. False start, offense number 66. Five-yard penalty, second down. It's against Chantrell Henderson. Meantime, we go back to New York in an update with James Brown. All right, Spiro, take a look, Houston. How about Case Keenum, guys, right here? Eight-yard TD pass to Andre Johnson. They take the lead 21-17. On the day, Case Keenum 24-34, 243 yards and one TD. A pretty impressive performance by that backup quarterback. Playing with the purpose. Back to Spiro and Solly. So J.J. Watt right in the thick of that MVP race. He and the Texans need a win and some help from Baltimore and San Diego to get into the playoffs. Watkins, that is a tough stiff arm. Sending Malcolm Butler to the turf. Nice pass through the air as the rookie picks up eight. As we continue with that MVP race, you know, it seems like every year it goes to a quarterback or even a running back, but not to a defensive player. And J.J. Watt is the kind of player that on, when you play on defense, they don't design plays for you. You have to just go out and make something happen. And I just love to see him be awarded the MVP, particularly as he has his team in the hunt to make the playoffs. Third and four. Fires completes Robert Woods who had the early touchdown catch first down as his forward progress takes him to the 23. Saturday CBS Sports hoops it up first will be Ryan Boatwright and the defending champions the Connecticut Huskies taking on Billy Donovan's Florida Gators and then a Big Ten, a Big Ten bash when Maryland and Nebraska throw down in women's basketball all right here on the road to the final four. Sally, just to get back to Watt, I don't think anyone could argue the greatness of him that he's had this season, but there is a school of thought that a team has to at least get into the playoffs for a guy to win that award. Uh, so they're going to keep it on the ground here on first and ten. Jackson dances across the 25 ahead to the 29. What's your response to that? Well, it's an individual award, is it not? I mean, yes, they don't is. award the MVP to the team. They <laughs> give it to one guy for his performance and his contribution to the team. And so if the team has to win in order for you to get an MVP, I think those are two separate deals because, uh, you know, Tom Brady contributes to his team winning every single year. You could almost award him the MVP just about every given year. But I think an MVP performance is the way that you strap it up every single week and give your team the chance to win and you have a dominant performance each and every week. Jackson stuffed. Very rarely have you seen a defensive player win that award. Uh, Sally pointed out Lawrence Taylor coming to mind. Dominance. 1986. J.J. Watt. Dominance. No one wants to play against those guys. 228. Timeout called. Buffalo by eight. Down to the final 228, third and six. Orton and Buffalo already posting their most wins since 2004. A win today gets them their first winning season in 10 years. Orton hit on the release, incomplete, intended for Watkins. And a first penalty marker uh, thrown left. Passer, defense number 52. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. That's Jonathan Casillas again making the start for the injured Dante Hightower. See Automatic gonna, first down. Yeah, he's going to come in, Spiro, right there. Connecting with the face mask of Orton. Nothing truly egregious, but the rule states that it has to be a forcible blow to the head or neck area of the quarterback. Oh, Sally, that's tough. We've talked about how difficult it is to be a defender in the NFL, the way the game is called today, a lot differently than when you play it. You have to play fast, you have to play physical, and those bang-bang plays are very tough. So automatic first down, but the Patriots defense against the run, very stout. Football came loose. Yeah. Now they say it is Buffalo football. 
not sure if it came after Jackson hit the, the turf. Or it was simply a recovery. And now a challenge flag has been thrown out. And it is thrown by Belichick. New England's challenge thrown or fumbled prior to being down by contact. Sally, don't tell Belichick that it is a meaningless game. Looks like an injured <laughs> defender. And a silver Solinga, who has been good for them in a backup role up front. And he's going to walk off on his own power. Again, the challenge here, was it a fumble? He's right there, because Salinga made contact, so he, he's down by contact right now. So, this is not going to be ruled a fumble. Salinga did make contact before Jackson hit. And then Moore is able to come over and knock the ball out after Jackson was ruled down. We had a chance to talk with Belichick the other night. Looks like a quick decision made here by McCauley. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. The runner was down by contact prior to losing control of the football. The wing is charged with their second timeout. And Belichick telling us, you know, every game means something. Told us about Sterling Moore, defensive back who played for him now with the Cowboys, but here in 2011 played against the Bills in the regular season finale under these same circumstances had two INTs in the game and worked his way into the playoff rotation it's always an opportunity for someone to gain the confidence of the coach and solidify his standing for that postseason run one more play before the warning Martin 16 for 22, 176, and the early touchdown throw to Woods. Jackson brought down a couple of yards short as that takes us to the two-minute warning. 17-9 Buffalo. You're watching the NFL, and it looks like we may stay here. Timeout has been called, so one more second. Doug Marone watches as Bill Belichick Sally getting his money's worth. <laughs> calls a timeout. One second before the clock is going to stop. Belichick last week becoming the fourth winningest head coach in the history of the sport. Future Hall of Famer passing Curly Lambeau with that victory at MetLife Stadium against Rex Ryan and the Jets. Third and 11. Patriots coming to the blitz. Orton had no chance. Threw it right at the feet of Jackson. And that takes us to the two-minute warning. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Well, Bill Belichick wanting to give his rookie quarterback, Jimmy Garoppolo, one more chance. But they're a touchdown and a two-point conversion away from tying this game. Patriots out of timeouts. Buck 53 to play. Amendola bobbled it for a moment, able to recover. And he takes a hard hit right at the 25-yard line. Norris Searcy, one of their starting safeties, doing it on special teams. And here comes the 23-year-old first-year quarterback, Garoppolo. First time he's been in this situation where he gets to lead his team. A come-from-behind situation in the fourth quarter. Remember, as you said, Spiro, touchdown and two-point conversion would tie it up. Before today, Garoppolo had played only 34 total snaps on in relief in weeks four and eight against Kansas City and Chicago. Took over for Brady at the start of the third quarter. First and ten, over the shoulder catch by James White. Rookie running back out of Wisconsin, fourth round pick. Again, clock running, no timeouts. No timeouts means he's got to create tempo, set the offense, get everyone lined up, get the ball snapped. Second and eight. Another quick strike, and once again, it's White. 
First down marker right at the 35. Solid, they're going over the middle of the field, and that clock's still running. Well, they're making completions, but yeah, you want to get it outside the numbers, give your receiver a chance to get out of bounds to stop the clock. Third and three. Garoppolo, nowhere to throw, flushed out. Here comes Hughes from the back. Pass sails incomplete, and it will be fourth down and three coming up. Well, you're smart to throw that one away as opposed to trying to run it or just trying to run out of bounds because he would have lost yards on the play. Throw it away for an incompletion, that will stop the clock. Again, as we told you earlier, the Bills have never won at Gillette Stadium. 13 straight road losses in New England. Have not won here since 2000 when Doug Flutie was their quarterback. Fourth and three. Garoppolo incomplete. Intended for Amendola. No penalty markers. And the Bills are going to get it back. The coverage Kale on Roby. the play by yeah. Roby. Yeah, the Kale Roby. Good coverage. Look at this. Yeah, I thought there was early contact grabbing at the arms of Danny Amendola prior to the ball arriving. Fish is going to let him play. Looks like the Bills may get out of here with a win. Their first in quite a long time. A nice moment for Doug Marone after that terrible loss last Sunday in Oakland, mathematically eliminating them from postseason contention. In the meantime, for Tom Brady and the Patriots, Zali, they'll have that first round bye, and the countdown will officially begin to their postseason bid in two weeks. Sally, we mentioned the improvements that they've made defensively. We know how explosive their offense has been. How good is this team? How deep will they go? Well, they've got a lot of things to work on. They've got to be able to complete passes down the field in a more efficient manner. The offensive line got to do a better job of protecting Tom Brady if they're going to go through the AFC and make it to the Super Bowl. And defensively, they got to do a better job of pressuring the opposing quarterbacks. They're going to play some good ones in the playoffs, and they're going to do a better job defensively at creating a pass rush. Still some critical postseason games to determine who's in and position in progress. We'll get bonus coverage coming up on CBS. So the Buffalo Bills able to come to New England, get their first win on the road against the Patriots since 2017 to 9. Your final special thanks to our incredible crew. Buffalo 17 and the Patriots 9 coming up next. A winner take all in the NFC South between the Panthers and the Falcons. Now for Solomon Wilcox, our entire crew's girl, Venus, saying so long for Foxborough. You've been watching the NFL on CBS. We'll send you to James Brown after this.